Hello everyone, my name is Crystal David and I am a clinical pharmacist at OSU in the Department of Family Medicine. Today for the SARS-CoV-2 pharmacotherapy review, I'm gonna talk with you about the use of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, and the use of nebulizers in patients who are being treated for COVID-19 infections. There's been speculation that patients with COVID-19 who are receiving ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or NSAIDs might be at an increased risk for adverse outcomes. And in reports from France, there was talk about a possible increase in mortality with ibuprofen use in patients with COVID-19 infections. However, none of those reports have been substantiated. You might have even seen social media posts that were talking about how the World Health Organization recommended against NSAID use in patients with COVID-19. So where does all of this come from? Well, SARS-CoV-2 has been shown to use the ACE2 receptor for cell entry. And ACE2 receptors are found in our lungs, heart, kidneys, and vasculature. ACE inhibitors and ARBs have been thought to um, upregulate the number of ACE2 receptors. And the question then becomes, can it lead to increased susceptibility to COVID-19 infections or at least worsening of COVID-19 infections? Again, that same concern is there for the link between ibuprofen and the upregulation of ACE2 receptors as well. So there are a couple of studies here I looked at that revolved around ACE inhibitors and ARBs. And the first one was a single center case series of 362 patients who had COVID-19 infections and hypertension. 115 of those patients were taking either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. They found no difference in severity of disease, complications, or risk of death in this series. A second one was a retrospective multi-center study, and it had 1,128 patients. Of those, 188 were taking either an ACE or an ARB. And their findings showed that it was unlikely that ACE inhibitors or ARBs were associated with increased mortality risk. They maybe even found that there could be an association with a lower risk of all-cause mortality in the patients who were taking ACEs or ARBs compared to those who were not. The third study was a retrospective multi-center study with smaller 205 patients and only 46 who were taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, but again, their findings were suggestive that the ACE inhibitors do not increase the severity of COVID-19. Now, there was a joint statement released by the Heart Failure, Heart Failure Society of America, the American College of Cardiology, and the American Heart Association that recommended against adding or removing ACE inhibitors or ARBs in the treatment of COVID-19 patients beyond what you would normally do in clinical practice. So they said that patients who receive these medications should continue treatment with them unless there is some other reason for discontinuation. And that there's no clinical evidence that supports increased risk for adverse outcomes with the continued use of these medications. And you know, we know that patients who have cardiovascular disease are already at an increased risk with serious COVID-19 infections and complications. So stopping these medications abruptly in the high-risk patients, like those with heart failure or prior MIs, might actually lead to clinical instability and worsening outcomes. So there has also been a little bit of talk about using ARBs to treat COVID-19 patients, so starting to get in patients who weren't already on it for hypertension. However, there really hasn't been any evidence yet to support this hypothesis. Now, there is a current clinical trial right now, and um, it is a multi-center double-blinded study, and it has COVID-19 patients who have been hospitalized, and in this study, they're randomizing the patients to receive either 50 milligrams daily of losartan or placebo and it's for seven days or until hospital discharge. And the primary outcome that they're gonna look at in this study are the patient's SOFA scores. So let's move on to NSAIDs. And we kind of talked about before where there was some talk in the, um, in the social media arena of how the WHO put out a statement against it. But on March 18th, they put a statement out on Twitter that said, hey, you know what, we do not recommend against the use of ibuprofen in patients who have COVID-19. There is no current evidence to support any association between ibuprofen use and negative outcomes in the patients with a COVID-19 infection. And some experts are recommending favor, like favoring using acetaminophen over NSAIDs for fever in these patients. 
the surviving sepsis campaign for COVID-19 didn't make a recommendation about NSAIDs, but they do make a recommendation for using acetaminophen over no treatment for fever. And then the NIH put out some treatment guidelines for COVID-19 patients. And in their guidelines, they state that if a patient is already on an, um, an anti-inflammatory like this for other conditions, to continue that medication in this patient population, and that they give no preference over acetaminophen or NSAIDs for treatment of fever, regardless of the patient's COVID-19 status. And they give this um, a rating of A3, and so that means a strong recommendation based on expert opinion. So the last thing to talk about today is concerns surrounding nebulizers. And the concern here is that the aerosol or droplet generation during nebulization might actually distribute the virus into the air. And that once this happens, the virus may persist in droplets in the air for up to two hours. So what does this mean for medications in this patient population? The recommendation is to utilize a meter dose inhaler whenever possible. And if a patient is at home and needs to be on a nebulizer, maybe they can't get access to an inhaler or um, insurance doesn't pay for it. The recommendation is to minimize exposure. So don't have anybody else in the room with you while you're using a nebulizer. If they can, it's recommended to use some kind of location that doesn't recirculate the air. So outside on the porch or on the patio, maybe in the garage. And then to clean and sanitize surfaces that may have been contaminated by the virus particles during the nebulization treatment. So in summary, clinical pearls from today's topic. Um, the recommendation is to continue the use of ACEs and ARBs in COVID-19 patients, unless there's some other reason to stop them. So basically continue standard of care. Don't start an ACE inhibitor or an ARB in a COVID-19 patient for the treatment of COVID-19 unless you're in the setting of a clinical trial. It's okay to use acetaminophen for fever in patients with COVID-19. And there's no data against the use of NSAIDs in these patients as well. Then the last thing is to avoid nebulizers whenever possible and opt for an inhaler if it is available. All right, so that's all for today. Thanks for listening, and I will continue to update these recommendations as new data comes out.